G'day guys, welcome to Yana Beauty. My name is Tanya and I'm your personal little guinea pig. And today, we're going to be doing a tag video. And it's not my tag video, I've been tagged. Um, I think this is the first time that I've ever been tagged in a video that I'm aware of. Today we're going to be doing the Eco Beauty tag, which was created by a lovely YouTuber called Krista Bunny. If you don't know her, you should go and check her out. She's a relatively small channel at the moment, but I guarantee you she's going to go right up there. She is just the sweetest little thing. And she's come up with this uh, tag idea, and I think it's absolutely fabulous. So I thought that I would uh, do it today with you guys. And um, yeah, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Welcome back guys. Now as I said before, this tag was created by Krista Bunny. If you want all of her socials, I'm most likely going to provide it. Don't forget, I have a tendency to forget everything. I'm going to drop her links down below, but I'm hoping that I remember to put them on the screen here for you guys to see. Um, I've already binge watched all of her videos and I'm eagerly waiting for her to pump out some more. So let's get into these questions. There are 10 questions. Well, this sort of 10 questions. There's kind of like 11, but um, we'll get to that. So the first question is, is how do you feel about the whole declutter cycle? Mm, well, that's a little bit of a hard one because while I like to watch haul videos, I feel like some haul videos are only created for that purpose. You know, like I don't mind if somebody's like they need to go get a whole bunch of things and they've got this sort of like checklist that that's kind of cool but I feel like there's a lot of waste happening because people are doing haul videos because they're going to uh, let's see like Kmart in Australia which would be probably the equivalent to Target in America and they're creating these videos for the purpose of just doing a haul video and all of the things that they're picking up I mean I'm thinking that maybe a couple of things that they actually picked up they really needed but I think a majority of the things that they do pick up was sort of like wasted and I do find that I have watched a few of these channels where they've turned around and said that they've just got so much stuff now they, they just want to throw it away um, I was watching somebody a little bit earlier who just said that they just wanted to throw all their stuff away because they had too much and I find that very wasteful, so I think the um, the idea of a whole video is cute and fun to watch, but I think it really is a big waste, especially those who only create the whole videos just for likes and watches. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think that uh, if, you, if you go with an idea of what you want to get and you pick up maybe one or two more things that you didn't expect yeah okay but if you're going specifically just to make the video I think it's a waste and you shouldn't do it as for declutters well yeah I I don't really need to do declutters because I don't haul more than I need sort of thing so not yet anyway so uh, declutters I can understand more so for um, sort of like bigger youtubers and um, people who just <sighs> have excesses of amounts. I, I understand it and um, if you can find a way to declutter in a way that is going to not necessarily go into the bin but somebody else is going to benefit from it um, or you can use parts of it um, to either recycle or for example like the mascaras you can use the wands and send them off to um, some wildlife shelter so they can use to get the ticks and the fleas out of the uh, animals. I think that's cool if you can use it a couple of times um, but yeah, I think that there's a big problem when people are decluttering 300 lipsticks. I think that's a big issue, so, mm. I like watching them because I like to see what people throw away, um, what they weren't really interested in, but, uh, those big sort of hauls, it's like, oof, jeez, hmm. Question number two, what do you do with products you don't end up liking? <sighs> this one's really easy for me. Um, I am really, really, really fussy about what I buy. Um, and it's not just that I'm really, really fussy. I can talk myself out of almost anything, um, except for purple palettes. That one's, that one's really, really hard to talk myself out of. But um, yeah, I mean, my makeup stash is relatively small um, in comparison to what I've seen with some people. I'll put a picture up here if I remember to take one. But um, yeah, I... Let's just say I like 60 items a year. I may only pick up maybe five of those. So, um, yeah, if I do um, end up not liking something, generally when I try a product for the first time, I do it in a way that's going to be still sanitary um, in case I don't like it. 
Um, moisturizers and stuff like that is pretty usually good because you just squeeze it out. I can usually hand those on to anyone in my family or friends. Um, lipsticks and stuff like that, I generally use a um, disposable lipstick uh, or a... Um, a uh, sorry, disposable lipstick applicator or a lipstick brush first to apply it the first time in case I don't like the colour and the formula. Um, there has been times where I've just gone rah and not liked the colour and thought, ooh, what am I going to do with it now? I usually find another way to use that lipstick, um, especially if it's like a, a liquid lipstick. I could use it for an eyeshadow, all sorts of things like that. But um, if I don't like stuff, I generally do pass it on, but I generally can pass it on because the first time that I use it, I do it in a sort of sanitary way, or I can actually sanitize it pretty well when I'm giving it away. So, yeah, um, I give it away. <laughs> I don't hold on to it until it goes bad because I find that that's a definite waste. So, even for um, sentimental value, I just won't do it. So, <laughs> all right, I just had a bit of an interruption with my camera. How rude. Like, it just. I have my laptop set up here so I can actually see what's going on and that just shut down and so I don't know if I missed anything, hopefully I caught all of that. But let's go into question number three which is do you have any products that were gifted to you that they did not end up liking? The answer is kind of like yes and no. Um, I've been gifted two products, um, not including like uh, giveaways that I've won, but just by two people who have gifted me. Um, actually, ironically, both of them were Ofra highlighters, two different colours, and they didn't gift it to me. I don't think they didn't like them. I just think that they either had double ups or they had too many um, highlighters, and I absolutely love those. Um, I wanted to try a particular shade, but I also just wanted to know what the formula was like. And I think they're fantastic. I still want the shade that I want, which is Pillow Talk. Um, I can't remember what it is that I was gifted. I have... One second. So the shades that I was gifted was the highlighter in Bali, the Ofra highlighter in Bali, which is like a... Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that. It's kind of like a orange I guess yeah um I'm not sure how I'm gonna wear that but I think it's absolutely beautiful and the other one is in blissful which is um when I can get it open is this shade here which is kind of I don't know how to explain that one kind of like a champagne rose gold kind of thing I don't know I think they are both stunning and I love them. It's not what I'm wearing today. Today I'm actually wearing a highlighter that I got from Teresa Is Dead, which was the um, Benefit Cookie um, highlighter, which I'm wearing right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But um, yeah, so they didn't gift it to me because I didn't like it. Well, I don't think so anyway. They gifted it to me because they had too many. And um, yeah, so I guess the answer really is no. Uh, let's move on to question four, which is... What is the biggest waste of packaging you have seen in your opinion? <laughs> that is definitely PR packaging. It's like, I don't even know why PR packaging needs to be a thing. Like, who doesn't want free stuff? Really? Why does it need to be extravagant packaging? I can understand making like the packaging for display in a store and stuff like that, but why does everybody need to receive like this big box and just... Do you get what I'm saying? Like, not everybody needs that. What are they going to do with that? You know what they're going to do? They're going to throw it away. Some people are going to keep it so they can store it and put it in their background. But realistically, at the end of the day, it's it's going to be old news in a week. They're going to throw that shit away. So um, PR packaging definitely is overkill and completely unnecessary because, yeah, people aren't going to want it more just because it's in huge, bulky packaging. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> I think I need a drink, guys. <laughs> You have to look at this cup. I don't know whether you can see it. It says, can you see that? With a fuck fuck here and a fuck fuck there, here a fuck, there a fuck. I don't give a fuck fuck. I thought that was absolutely cute. I actually got this from my, the father of my children, um, my ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend. And I thought it was absolutely fucking adorable. Um, so we get on like a house on fire and uh, yeah, it's my new favorite mug now. So, hmm. Hmm. And I love my coffee. Mm. So that was question four. Question five is, does wasteful packaging deter you from buying a product? <sighs> 
No. Um, it should. I know it should. But the way I see it is, is I can't really control what somebody's going to send me, how they're going to send it to me. I can only control what I do with the packaging after I receive it. So I keep bubble wrap. I reuse bubble wrap. I usually keep boxes. Um, for example, I get a ballot box every single month. And it's these cardboard boxes about this big, about this high, kind of annoying. It's kind of like too small for a gift box when you're giving somebody a present. Um, and a bit of an odd shape, but um, I store other things in it at home. So, yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but I do try and keep things and reuse them whenever possible. Gift bags, for example, I know it's not makeup related, but like when I get a birthday present or a Christmas present, whatever, um, and I get like one of those gift bags, I'll always keep them, I'll reuse them, and um, yeah, I think I held on to a gift bag for like eight years or something that I got with like my first child, like it's a boy, and then I reused that bag for somebody else's child, so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I um, yeah, I should care more about excess packaging, and uh, something that I could probably look at in the future. But I never really thought about it because, like I said, I can't control what I get sent. I can only control what I do with it once I have it. So, question number six is: What is your favorite plastic-free product in your collection? And that's got to be my um, cardboard uh, palettes. So I have several palettes from Colourpop, which is the cardboard packaging. I wish their nine pan um, monochromatic palettes were cardboard. They're not. They're plastic. I don't understand why they did that because I think that the plastic, uh, I think that the cardboard packaging itself is fine. Like it's cute. Uh, it's biodegradable. I like it. Um, yeah, I think that all palettes should be made out of cardboard packaging. I don't see the need why they need to be out of plastic. So. Yeah, there you go. Question number seven is the most waste producing product habit in your routine. I've got to say that that's my face sprays. Um, I have dry skin and so I will use like a just just a random face spray. Like at the moment I'm using um, the Mario Badesco face spray. It's not a setting spray. Um, it's, it's not going to like maintain the longevity of my makeup. All it's really gonna do is sort of like get rid of that powdery look if I do powder. Um, so I really could just get a spray bottle, put a little bit of water in, and I really think that I'm gonna get the same effect. Um, instead of just going out and buying like every two or three weeks, you know, a new spray, new bottle, new container to throw away, because I go through that stuff so much, because I'm pretty liberal with it. So maybe that's something that I could change in the future. Instead of going out and buying tons of face sprays, I could just try the water or maybe just use a damp beauty blender or makeup sponge, whatever, to sort of bring down the powder a little bit. So yeah, it would have to be facial sprays. So yeah. Question number eight is what is the least waste producing product habit in your routine? And I've got to say that it's probably my, um, my face cleaners. I used to use makeup wipes and um, not only were they bad for my skin, but obviously bad for the environment because I used to go through a shit ton. Um, it was kind of convenient because my son's still in nappies and like the wipes were there and I would just grab one, clean myself down. And they're not thin wipes either, they were those thick huggies ones. So um, I decided to get rid of those. I decided to get rid of makeup pads because um, I also used to put my um, toner on with a makeup pad, but now I've actually put my toner in a spray bottle. I spray my face, I sort of pat my face around since it's a chemical toner. Um, yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, oil cleansers. I'm using an oil cleanser right now, and um, yeah, that uh, it's the one that I'm using is fine for the environment, um, and it gets all of my makeup off, it breaks it down. I generally do go in with a second cleanse. Um, I have been looking into those face halos or just like those microfiber um, face cleansers, the reusable ones. That's something that I want to look at next, just to go that extra step. Um, but that's probably my most least wasteful product habit that I've got at the moment. Question number nine is, what steps do you think the beauty community could go to to reduce waste? Whew, good question. Um, I think they could do a lot more than they're doing. Uh, I think that they could all switch to the cardboard packaging for palettes, like I said. I think that um, there could be a lot more um, 
what do you call it, shampoos and conditioners in the bar soap, um, body washes in the bar soap. Um, at, it was that reason I was actually looking into Lush because Lush have a lot of um, products that are supposed to be good for the environment because there is no packaging. Um, and there's only one thing that sort of stopped me from going into Lush though, guys. Like, I saw a video on Instagram the other day, Instagram stories. Um, I think I'll put it up on the screen for you right here. But it's a it's a body wash, and you can see in the video right here that it, she's rubbing it on herself, and that is a lot of dye. That is a lot of red pink dye in a in a body product, and I'm thinking to myself, Phew, I've got one of those like white plastic basins at the bottom of my shower, and I'm thinking, mmm, that's gonna stain. I have heard a lot of people whinge about um, how much dye is in some of their products, and it's cute, don't get me wrong, it's cute, but if I'm going to have to use um, harsh cleaners, I guess, to clean the bottom, because I'm renting, um, to get it out, because I, I don't think vinegar uh, and bicarb soda or anything like that is going to get that sort of thing out of that, I would probably have to use Jif or something like that, um, then it's kind of like doesn't work, you know what I mean? So I'm using a, a body wash and I'm getting rid of the plastic bottle, but I'm having to use chemicals to clean the uh, shower. And that's if I can even, like, is it going to stain me? I'm going to have to look more into it. But I do think that companies can do a lot more. I think that um, uh, they could offer a sort of like a back to Mac kind of thing. If you don't know about back to Mac, um, you can hand back, I'm not entirely sure, but I think you can hand back like a certain amount of products and get a discount or um, they may even replace it with a, a product, I'm not sure. But I think that if every company had some sort of like back to Mac sort of thing, like um, send back your liquid lip um, cases, whether it's full or empty or something like that, and get a free whatever or a discount, I think that, um, especially if it was mandatory, like that, that they had to offer something like that, I think that we would see a lot less um, wastage if they could sort of like clean the packaging, um, re-stamp it or whatever and send it out again um, instead of it just going, you know, in the oceans and whatever. I think that we could do a lot more and I think that um, that businesses could do a lot more than they're doing. Uh, I think that right now they're just focusing on pumping out the product, you know. Um, yeah, they could slow down too. Like, Colourpop, come on, do we really need to be pumping out that much freaking product? Like, I can't keep up. <laughs> it's affordable, but it's like, bam, 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 bam. We don't need that much, you know? Like, slow down just a little bit. That's, that's in my opinion, like a massive waste. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that question. Now, question number 10 is a create your question here. And um, the question that Cristobani has put up for us to answer, or myself to answer, is what do I think about Tarte Scandal regarding the stickers over the Icy Betch palette? That's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, for me, I think that in a business, transparency is really important, like it, it is key. And I think that had they have been um, open and upfront with the fact that they were going to be reusing, or not reusing, but um, using old stock, old palettes, um, to sort of save the environment, I guess, or hmm, I think that they would have ended up getting a lot more respect. Um, but I think because the people felt like they were being duped and ripped off and all that sort of stuff, and that you know it was beaten hidden, that it became bigger than it needed to be. I don't necessarily have a problem with them putting a sticker over something. I think that it would probably be easier if a brand sticked to one style of palette, um, and then it would be a lot easier, you know. Um, yeah. They wouldn't have to worry about it. Like if they just had like a base black palette that they could put stickers on after um, they've made like the color selection and stuff like that are interchangeable. Yeah, or they could do magnetic palettes. Like there's so many different things. But I don't have a problem with them reusing or using old stock and putting stickers over it personally. But I think that people got their noses out of joint because it was hush hush. Um, yeah. I can understand why people got their noses out of joint, but it's not really that big of a deal at the end of the day. Not to me, anyway. So, all right. So, question number 11, which is really question number 10 for you guys. My question to you is, 
A while back we saw Urban Decay set up those uh, swap out vending machines for you bring in the old um, naked palette and you would get a new the new naked palette. My question sort of is here, if there was a vending machine that you could bring your products to, um, put them in the machine and then select a brand new product, now it wouldn't matter if your products were old, empty, broken, whatever, if they were like genuine makeup products, don't worry about the rest of the details, don't think too deep about it. If there was a vending machine there with 10 choices of brand new makeup releases and all you had to do was bring in all the makeup that you didn't like, put it in there and you could get something brand new, quality, good makeup, would you do it? I want to know why you would and why you wouldn't do it. And um, yeah, I haven't really thought about who I could tag in this video. Um, I also don't know a lot of uh, YouTubers uh, myself and Chris has pretty much tagged everybody that I know. But I did think about one person in particular that I thought would actually make this video um, interesting because she does get a, quite a fair bit of PR from what I could see and I think that she's funny as hell. So I wanted to tag Raw Beauty Christy. Um, I don't think that she's ever going to see this video. So you guys, if you can help me by sharing this out, tagging her, whatever, I think that it would be very, very interesting to see what she's got to say about some of the questions here. And I would love for you guys to join in this as well. Um, head over to Cristovani, check out her channel, let her know where you came from. Oh, there was one more thing that I forgot to mention before we go, guys. Uh, Cristovani asked what um, was our sort of like eco-friendly um, drink apparatus and mine is this Betty Boop travel mug. So it's just a ceramic mug and um, I can travel around everywhere with it. And it's a really good size too. I mean, it keeps the temperature pretty well. My auntie loves to use this one actually. I also have a... Um, Starbucks one that I really really like using but also I like to bring around now these little metal straws I wanted to get one of the Jeffree Star ones but like in Australian dollars it was like $40 for like a pack of three or four and I'm not about that I got a packet of five at a two dollar shop for and this is going to sound stupid because this is a two dollar shop but I paid three dollars for a packet of five but these are awesome so not only are they reusable but um they seem to make my drinks colder. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm loving it. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be using metal straws from now on. So that's my two ways to um, help be eco-friendly with my drinking uh, apparatuses. So there you go. All right. So I really enjoyed doing this video, guys. And um, I also want to say a big thank you for Crystal Money for tagging me in this video. I am flattered, honoured. I don't know all the words to say. And um, yeah. I just hope that I haven't slaughtered it and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it and um, I hope you guys join in and uh, yeah. <laughs> if you like what you saw guys today, go ahead, feel free, give me a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like what you saw and I'll continue to do things like this. And if you're not part of the family yet and uh, you want to be, go ahead, feel free, click that subscribe button. But like I always say, don't forget to check the bell if you want to be notified of all my videos that I do upload. And um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Okay, that wasn't cringy at all. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh my god. I feel like that went so fast. Do you like my shirt? It says, what, is, what does it say? Let me see if I can show you. It says, I'm not always a bitch. Just kidding. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>